Good morning, folks. Today we have news you won't hear blasted across mainstream airwaves because it's well outside the propagandized stance popularly taken on the real thing called climate change, but it's of critical importance to Earth's future. Now we began looking at a sun-spotless active region and now a plasma filament setting up for collapse. We've got a lot to do here today, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and start with the last 24 hours on our star, Great look at the bright active region without sunspots and the small equatorial coronal holes in black. No solar flares or other eruptive behavior with the exception of tiny portions of the plasma filaments seen dancing around the southern hemisphere. A gorgeous dance of ionized helium emitting 304 angstroms of light. Going to the solar wind, we find decreasing plasma speed in purple second from the bottom but fluctuating density and above that with a phi angle event that luckily sent the BZ red line up top into the positive and so a small rise in the KP index is all we've got. When the phi flips the other way it can actually trigger geomagnetic storms. We're quickly looking at ionized iron shining in 211 angstroms here showing dark coronal holes and quasi dark surrounding sparse coronal plasma. Heliographic latitude of the central opening suggests they will impact earth later this weekend. Let's come next to the weather where after the news yesterday I was monitoring a strong storm system entering the Midwest. The moment it hit North Dakota it intensified to produce a deadly tornado that was flipping trailers. That lot had a few more rectangles on it before. The day of watching the biggest storms was interesting as we shift from water vapor to lightning to see how the remnants of barrel south of Chris started the day blasting it out of the water in terms of electric flashing. This would not be the case by day's end, however. It was around this time that Maria was crossing north of Taiwan and approaching China. The storm is weakening over land there right now. Luckily, it missed Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Beijing. Let's come back to the Atlantic, where as the day wore on, the northern side of Chris got more lightning activity, and the remnants of Barrel to the south lost their grip on the skyward current shooting as it spread out and began to further dissipate. By the time the sun was setting, there was a reversal of that lightning production with focus on that northern side of Chris. Would have been amazing to see from the water 50 miles north could have been some good sprite viewing too. Time for some science. We're heading out to the recently famed exoplanet, which is Earth's second closest potentially habitable neighbor. Ross 128b has offered new data and appears the planet is rocky like Earth, appears it could have liquid water on its surface due to having a temperate climate like Earth, and interestingly they found that its core should be larger than Earth's, which has me wondering about the magnetosphere of the planet and what protection it would offer inhabitants. Up next, an amazing calving event in Greenland was filmed as enormous chunks of ice broke off and went into the sea. Now, veteran observers recall that on one side, global warming advocates fear sea level rise from things like this and blame the calving on the heat. A very few of us desperately want to remind everyone that those short-term facts are true, but looking a little bit further ahead, it is the release of that ice that cools and freshens the oceans to disrupt the critical drivers of heat exchange between low and high latitude. Enter the absolute best institute on Earth in this field. Woods Hole, confirming with a definitive stamp that events like the calving event in the Arctic Circle and their release of fresh water is the thing that drove Earth into the younger driest cold period. This has long been speculated, long left undiscussed in mainstream climate change where the Earth was created in 1880, but now the number one institute for polar marine science is loading up the evidence. Lastly, folks, some impressive names on this list of those claiming Milky Way mass galaxy formation must be rewritten, and why? Satellite galaxies. Sound familiar? We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.